Um, thank you, Chandra. So I'll start and then uh, you can continue. So practically, uh, again, on the upper left side, we have the short axis that we see that the right heart is dilated. It's significantly impaired. I would say severely impaired. And also the left heart is completely squeezed. And again, we have a D shape in and diastole and systole. Then uh, on the right, we have uh, the apical four chamber view, slightly tilted. And we can see again that the right heart and the right ventricle and the right atrium are dilated. They are almost double the size when compared to the left heart. And um, also the tricuspid annulus is dilated. We expect a small degree of tricuspid regurgitation here. And just to mention that with a tricuspid regurgitation jet, we can measure the right ventricular systolic pressure. And then at the bottom, we have the um, uh, parasternal long axis view. That on the, bo at the bottom of the picture, we have the left heart, which is normal in shape and good in function. But on the, at the upper part, we have the anterior part of the RV, which is dilated. And again, it's uh, dysfunctional. So we have a significant, a significant systolic dysfunction of the right heart and significant dilatation. Nothing has changed. So we see similar picture to the first echo. So again, I would, we would say that the pressures are quite high. What do you think, Chandra? Yeah, no, you, you're right, Julia. Uh, what is fascinating to me is look at how bad the right heart is and how hyperdynamic and underfilled the left heart is. So this creates a very difficult situation for the people managing it. You, if you give them inotropes, you're going to essentially squeeze the left heart out with very low stroke volume. But uh, it's kind of a difficult thing. What you do for the right heart may adversely affect the left heart. So you're not surprised, Chandra, you are not surprised in, in Julia, you are not surprised. The results from the procedure done by Robert were fascinating. And do you think the pressures are still high there? Or what are what are you thinking? The pulmonary artery pressures. I think so, the the pressure on the septum doesn't seem to be we don't have a good short axis view, but I don't see the the septum being squished as much as into the left heart in systole. So I would say it certainly is, is down. I don't know how down. Part of the problem is when the RV is failing, the pressure will come down by itself because there isn't much stroke volume going from the right heart. Uh, but if I had to guess, the pressure would certainly be lower. It's not normal yet, uh, but it's certainly lower than before. Okay, yeah, I agree. Yeah, go ahead. Also, just to, just to add that when we have acute right ventricular failure, there is a, a part of stunning of the right heart. So even when we treat the right heart, it needs hours or sometimes a couple of days in order to go back to normal size. And in patients with you know chronic thromboembolic disease, and we have recurrent increase of pulmonary vascular resistance, then there will be a plateau that the right heart will start getting impaired. Here's the first time that's happening to this patient. So I'm hoping that he had a normal RV to start with, and I'm hoping to see a normal RV after a couple of days. 